What's he doing? Optical image stabilization, electronic image stabilization, mechanical image stabilization. Today we're going to discuss what the differences in stabilization are for video. So along with testing my POCO F2 Pro, we're gonna be comparing it with the optical image stabilization, the sensor-based optical image stabilization in my Sony a6500. We're then gonna be comparing it to a lens-based optical image stabilization in conjunction with sensor stabilization. And then we're gonna be comparing all of that to an iPhone 11 Max, 11 Pro Max. Okay, so right now we're filming on my Sony a6500, uh, 16 to 55, and the lens has a piece of glass inside the lens, and that piece of glass moves using information from the accelerometer inside the camera to help stabilize the image. On top of that, inside of the camera, the image sensor actually moves as well. So these are two forms of stabilization that are working together uh, to provide you a a stable image. This is like the gold standard when it comes to non-mechanical based stabilization. This would be mechanical based stabilization. And we're gonna take a look at this in a second. you guys just saw was a lens and camera image stabilization combo. This next lens does not have image stabilization on it. Uh, I could do a whole video about why some camera lenses don't have image stabilization, but you guys probably don't want to see that. Essentially, this is a sharper lens because there isn't able, uh, image stabilization on the inside of it at the cost of not being as stable of a lens. So let's put this lens on, shoot some cinematic B-roll. So we're about to have uh, a rap battle, but one of the issues that you have with electronic image stabilization is that it crops in on the image, which is why I always have to use the ultra wide camera. And on top of that, if I move the camera ever so slightly and you look at the edges of it, you're gonna see weird warping and stuff like that. Um, and that just comes with the fact that the video that's being filmed has to get processed and the phone has to use the internal gyroscopes in order to correct for that movement. It, there's nothing really you can do about it, but we are gonna show you guys what we can do because we can do the same thing afterwards in editing. The only problem is that to like do this on a computer and use this kind of editing, it does require a lot of computational horsepower to do it after the fact. That's just the reality. So one of the things about electronic image stabilization and especially electronic image stabilization in cell phone 
is that you have to crop in on the sensor. So right now we're on a tripod, uh, 4K 60, no image stabilization, and just go ahead and look at the borders and see where things begin and end in the image. Now you're gonna see this cropped in a reasonable amount when we switch to electronic image stabilization. And here we go. Now I haven't changed anything in the way this camera is set up, anything other than switching to electronic image stabilization in device. Now I am using the stock Xiaomi camera app. I'm gonna switch it right now to the Google, uh, the Google camera app or uh, Gcam uh, for the Redmi K30 Pro, Poco F2 Pro, and you can compare the amount of crop that we have in the image right now. Okay, and now we are using Gcam 4K60 with EIS, and this is kind of the crop and what it looks like. Uh, I know I'm gonna get this question a lot. What about using stabilization in post-processing with uh, Google Photos, for the Google Photos uh, after processing. Um, I have used that. I'm not the biggest fan of it. I think it's just kind of a band-aid for like an overall bigger problem that we have. The other thing is that unless the device is recording metadata, metadata, <laughs> oops, uh, into the video file or the XML file, XML file, the, the file that is created along with the device, so that it can use that gyroscope data for the stabilization. It's all being done computationally. Now pause, because for GoPro, and this is an application that's been out for a while, uh, the GoPro application and GoPro files actually record the movement of the device. And there is separate GoPro applications or separate post-processing applications that take the file that records all of the movement of the GoPro plus the GoPro footage, combines that information together and gives you really incredible results in post-processing. Now, if we were somehow able to save that metadata that was recorded either when using Gcam or stock, and then let's say when charging the device or when the device was in deep hibernation, using that information to computationally uh, stabilize the footage after the fact, then we could have potentially really, really good 4K60 stabilized footage in device. Unfortunately, I haven't, I don't know anything about this on the Poco F2 Pro or on Android devices in general. I'm not exactly sure how Apple does it. I think Apple does some kind of post-processing stabilization, but essentially, those are some of the limitations that we have right now with doing stabilization in post-processing and electronic image stabilization. So one of the things about the iPhone 11 Pro Max, right? Yeah. Is that it uses optical image stabilization on the main sensor. What that means is that it doesn't have to crop in on the sensor so that the wide-ish or the field of view of the main sensor isn't compromised. If it had used optical image stabilization, it would crop in a little bit. That's why if you use the ultra wide, it does crop in a little bit because on the iPhone, it does not have optical image stabilization or sensor-based optical image stabilization on the wide sensor. Because it's much easier to use digital stabilization for a wider field of view and you can crop in a little bit. Aussie day. Mm -hmm. You look so guilty. If you guys are enjoying this content and you guys want to see more content like this, where I kind of take a deep dive into a subject, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Something like 93% of you guys aren't subscribed to this channel and the best way to support me is hit the subscribe button and go ahead and give me a shout out on Twitter. Okay guys, <laughs> so the next thing that I'm doing right now is I'm setting up my A6500 on a mechanical gimbal. Now, I used to use mechanical gimbals a ton in my filmmaking and a ton in like commercial work that I would do. But recently, and you guys will see, because of the amount of setup time and the amount of just kind of hassle that comes with this, I find that more often than not, um, using a mechanical gimbal kind of takes me out of the flow of filmmaking and in some ways it kind of 
It just makes it less enjoyable overall. Okay guys, I should probably explain what's going on with is all of this. Uh, this is a three axis mechanically stabilizing gimbal. Now, if you see this camera essentially holds any position, this is what the motor's off. This means that this is completely and perfectly balanced in all of the three axes. Now we're gonna go ahead, figure out which one of these cables works and then shoot some cinematic B-roll for you guys with the sunset. Now the one thing I want you guys to be paying attention to is how smooth does this footage look? After editing and looking over the footage of the Poco F2 Pro versus the iPhone, a couple of things really stood out to me. Really, other than color, there was a pretty noticeable difference in this, like, the overall quality of the footage, the overall quality of the stabilization between the two of them. And I find that really interesting since both the Poco F2 Pro and the iPhone 11 Pro Max, 11 Max Pro, uh, they both use electronic image stabilization on the wide angle lens. But the reality is that there was just kind of no comparison between the way the iPhone footage looked and the way the Poco footage looked. And that to me really just solidified how much of an advantage the iPhone has. When we compared all of this stuff to the gimbal footage that I shot with my Sony and then the uh, Zhiyun Weibo S gimbal, um, another thing that stood out to me was how even though the overall quality of the footage and the quality of the stabilization of the gimbal and my A6500, how much better that was, like the footage from the iPhone held up and it held up really, really well. Especially when it came to doing cinematic camera movements, it felt like the iPhone footage was never, the iPhone was never working against me in regards to stabilization. It, it understood the cinematic movement that I was trying to do with the device and then stabilized the footage in that way. Obviously it is worth noting that there is a huge price difference between these two devices. But at the end of the day, the biggest difference that I saw with these two devices was the electronic image stabilization on the wide angle. And that comes down to software and software development and the way EIS is implemented in these devices. And ultimately, I think that if you are looking for a device or a phone to do video with, the iPhone is just so much better. And the experience of using it, it made capturing a really nice footage simple, it made it capturing it easy. Is that ever going to replace something like my Sony A6500 and a gimbal? No, but there's a few things that we can learn from this. One, the iPhone is able to give you really good looking footage if you're a complete amateur. It was the first time I'd ever picked up an iPhone and I'm not the greatest at shooting cell phone footage. The second is that there is a lot of setup and there's a lot of time that it takes to balance a gimbal and to use that with a proper camera setup. And the fact that we're able to use computational video to, to kind of equal the playing field is something that was really, really surprising to me. The third thing that really stuck out to me when using the iPhone is that software and the overall camera experience of using the iPhone Although you don't have all the manual control, although you, it, the interface for it is not something that I particularly like, Apple has done an amazing job of making good quality video accessible to everyone. Now, I am going to be selling my Poco F2 Pro to buy a Xiaomi Mi 10, or that's the way it's looking at least. I sold my Redmi K20 Pro yesterday and I'm probably gonna be selling my Redmi K30 Pro in the next couple of days. And I'm really interested to see how the optical image stabilization that Xiaomi has on their flagship device 
compares to a flagship device from another brand. Let me know what you guys thought had the most natural and the most fluid movement. If you want me to do more deep dives into subjects like this, let me know in the comment section down below. And until next time guys, it's been Mitchell. 